Good morning, everybody, and uh, greetings from the Garden Route of South Africa. It's a champagne morning down here. Absolutely stunning day today. Uh, I know it's not trading related, but uh, light mist over the sea. In fact, the whales have arrived early. We counted 18 whales in the bay this morning. Uh, so we are uh, looking forward to a stunning week generally, but uh, hopefully the markets are going to be a little bit kinder to us this week than they were last week as well. Uh, I don't know what your experience was, but I found the markets to be pretty choppy last week. Uh, we ended up with some nice breakout activity, uh, well, literally in the last couple of days. But uh, overall, it was quite a challenging week last week. These do come along, as we know. Um, but having said that, you know, there weren't that many uh, valid trading opportunities either. Uh, so we uh, ended the week, I think, slightly down, in fact, which um, is, is not something that happens all the time, but it happens frequently enough. Uh, and um, happy to say, though, that only slightly down. So uh, looking forward to um, taking advantage of any continued trends that might pop up this week. So let's run through the charts like we usually do. Uh, and of course, if you've got any questions for me on anything that happened last week or any of the analysis that I've done, please feel free to pop that into the chat box. Uh, and of course, if you're watching this as a recording in the comments below. Right, so uh, Euro USD here on daily, of course, we had that uh, breakout. Uh, well, it actually wasn't a breakout. This, is, this has been a weak trend for some time. So uh, we've had that initial trend going back all the way to uh, April. Um, and since then, cyclicity has remained intact, but with these overlapping uh, uh, corrective waves, obviously, uh, we've, we've treated this as a weak trend. And certainly, last week's bullish impulse wave was followed by an overlapping bearish retracement wave once again. So uh, nothing really for us to do there. We don't look uh, at trading weak trends in our core strategies. Uh, and normally those also will keep us out of any type of overlay strategy as well. So uh, the, the weekly time frame really just shows uh, pretty much a, a slightly high test doji, uh, which is an indication of how little actually happened on this instrument last week. All right, so uh, on cable, on the weekly time frame, we've seen a continued uh, testing of uh, this resistance level. Last week's uh, bullish uh, weekly candle also showing very little uh, on this time frame. You can see it refused to make a higher high. Uh, so it didn't even get as far as that resistance level through the course of last week. And here on the daily time frame, it's really just a sideways move, despite the fact that we got one bullish impulse candle uh, on Thursday, it was. Uh, that really isn't anything meaningful to us at all. We don't have any cyclicity intact here. Uh, it really is going sideways in a pretty tight range there, much tighter than what our channels actually tend to indicate, at least for now. All right, so dollar yen still very much inside of our channel here uh, on the weekly time frame. Uh, we did get a bullish impulse candle, of course, uh, on the weekly time frame, which on the daily meant that we just managed to get a breakout from our HTC channel. Uh, on, on Thursday, uh, Friday, you know, it seemed to close in pretty much the same area. So it didn't continue with this bullish move. So much as this is technically a breakout, just uh, we're waiting to see what, what happens next. So if you are looking to trade uh, the lower time frames, then this uh, does uh, qualify. It's borderline. But remember that if your entry on, say, an H4 impulse uh, continues to be inside of that channel, which at the moment it is, that would still be a trade that you would walk away from. Uh, so I'll come back to that in a sec minute. Let's just go through our currency pairs first, and I'll have a look at anything at the end. Right, uh, dollar Swiss on weekly as well. A uh, long extended bearish wave uh, still continuing as we've noted uh, over the last few months. Uh, last week, uh, just a bullish candle, uh, which looks like this on daily, showing that this bearish trend, much as it's still borderline intact um, here on the daily time frame with that assumption that we had last week, uh, Tuesday, I think it was, uh, it's come right back inside of the channel. And as you can see, we, uh, we may even get a higher close today. So let's wait and see what happens there. But again, you can see here that th this is a the sort of reversal activity that we experienced last week. 
coming out of significant weakness already. We, we did note that before, that a lot of our previous trends were showing quite a lot of weakness. Uh, USD CAD up next on weekly, similar picture. Now uh, this is in fact, I think an inside candle for last week. Uh, definitely not that continued bearish movement. We noted the previous week that we uh, didn't have a, a bearish impulse candle. That has followed through with last week's um, sort of high test doji, if you like. Definitely not showing any strength here on weekly and represented on the daily with very much a sideways market as well. So uh, technically speaking on uh, this time frame, remember with that inside bar, we are still in a bearish impulse wave until uh, proven otherwise. So this is not a ring low. So if you're trading the impulse strategies, we would treat this, this candle here, this inside candle as a continuation candle. Uh, particularly because we still got to close in the lower part of that candle. So, uh, you know, if you're trading the, uh, the the daily impulse, then I think you would actually still be in a trade on this one uh, and be trailing your stop. I think it's managed to survive uh, everything that's been thrown at it over the last couple of weeks. So, yeah, your, your bearish daily impulse on this should still be alive. Um, and even though your stop hasn't yet been trailed quite to break even, it's reasonably close to that. Right, so Aussie and Kiwi are still doing their thing, which is basically nothing, to be honest. I haven't touched these for quite some time. Interesting that the support level was tested again on Friday, uh, but not much of a, an attempt to break through there at all. So on uh, Kiwi, uh, very choppy here on weekly now for over a month, of course. Uh, that really is not something we'd be interested in at all. Uh, this wave technically is still intact uh, because we had a higher high last week. So, you know, given the fact that we were looking for a, uh, a lower low in order to be able to say that a bearish wave has, has started, uh, we haven't been able to do that and the market went higher. So it's very, very iffy price action, something to stay far away from. Uh, and that higher high in the weekly time frame looks like this on daily where you can see once again, it tested the top of our HTC channel uh, and flopped back on Friday. So nothing doing there for us. Euro yen, however, uh, is one of the pairs that have continued to, uh, to give us uh, trading opportunities. So this we had, I think on H4 Impulse, we had a, a loser and a very nice winner on this. Uh, which is uh, fairly typical, but anyway, on the weekly time frame, first nice bullish impulse candle as part of this um, this bullish uh, impulse wave on a bullish trend. So uh, it was in fact an engulfing candle as well. I think we had a slightly lower, uh, no, not quite. It almost made a lower low here, uh, but nevertheless, on daily time frame, you can see how uh, we got this bullish resumption effectively, and I know quite a few of you, including this trader. Uh, are long on the euro yen. So depending on what strategy you're trading, of course, uh, there have been opportunities to go long here. Uh, yeah, we certainly did have a loser somewhere in the mix, uh, but certainly there was a winner uh, here on Thursday, I think that was, which went straight to target, literally in one candle. Uh, and since then it's been uh, pretty much going sideways. So um, I think also there might be another trade running on this for some of you uh, in any case. Uh, so yeah, that's the, uh, the Euro Yen. So you'll see on the Yen pairs that bullish activity that we've been talking about for some time continues representing the Yen weakness. Uh, so that's what it looks like obviously on the weekly time frame. On daily, uh, this trader took a trade at the close of the strong bullish impulse candle. I would caution against that, folks. There's maybe something that we, uh, we need to, to look at actually putting in a, a hard rule for. Uh, if, the, if we have a setup candle that really represents an overextended move, um, that does tend to uh, make it more difficult to maximize upside and limit downside. So, uh, in any event, let's see how this, this pans out. It could still work out just fine. Uh, and of course, you know, being the fact that we're now uh, having this high isolated, 
if you wanted to trade the lower time frames on this, you just need to wait for an indication that the next impulse wave on this daily time frame has started. Swiss yen, similar thing. So that's what it looks like on weekly. So last week, strong move. Uh, another uh, uh, another pair where we were able to to make some money on on Swiss yen, if I'm not very much mistaken. Um, I think yeah, Swiss yen certainly and euro yen because they are quite correlated with the euro and the Swiss franc. Certainly, I'm sure that one would have offered an opportunity uh, on the lower time frame. I've been busy with uh, coding our uh, trade manager. So uh, I'm really just been looking at the trades that some of you guys have been taking. Uh, I didn't trade at all last week. Only uh, my guys have done that. And of course, all of you. Uh, so some of my analysis is a little bit light here in terms of the trades maybe that we would have taken. Uh, nevertheless, you can see that there were certainly opportunities on uh, H4 Impulse. Uh, and um, even if you're trading, obviously, the daily impulse, I think some of you uh, we're in a, uh, a bullish trade here using advanced targeting, which is actually would have been stopped out this morning on the daily impulse. So uh, some nice uh, bullish trades there. I think also, okay, CAD yen as well. I think that's up next. Let's have a look. On the weekly first, another bullish impulse candle. Yes, so you can see this one, uh, there's advanced targeting in play here. If we drop down to execution time frame for the daily impulse uh, and the uh, the stop has been trailed uh, to lock in that profit so this one's been going for quite some time uh, since the 5th of may so just short of a month basically so not sure what's going to happen it's, if, if today comes down obviously it'll uh, stop that out for a for a very nice win uh, so some of these moves on the yen pairs with this yen weakness have really been very profitable so I hope you guys have managed to catch that. Uh, now, coming back to Aussie and Kiwi again, uh, nothing doing here either. So uh, again, we've noted on weekly how it tested that uh, resistance level a few weeks ago. Um, and it's deep inside of the channel. So really, it's not something that we've been interested in touching at all. Kiwi in up next. Uh, so we did get an outside close on this. Uh, which obviously, as far as we're concerned, means that we can start looking to trade this. If you're a channel trader, certainly. Uh, it is not, however, a valid W pattern, as you can tell. Uh, but if you are purely trading it on uh, channel breakouts, then you're already uh, seeing a pullback here um, and looking for your final setup criteria to be met for a daily impulse. So keep an eye out for that one for, uh, for this week. Moving on to our Euro crosses, Euro GBP weekly, uh, still nothing, nothing of interest at all. Uh, that's what it looks like on the daily, very much inside of the channel. Uh, not even touching this on any overlays either. Uh, Euro Swiss, as you know, I stay away from generally. Uh, and here you can see a similar kind of picture on the weekly time frame and daily. It's really just bouncing along on the support level over here. So uh, no action there for us at all. Uh, Euro CAD, uh, more interesting this one. Uh, I was looking to see where last week closed here. So closed at uh, 723 with our channel boundary uh, at 725. So literally about two pips below the resistance level. Uh, the week before, likewise, you know, it tested that resistance level and fell back. Last week was the same. It did make a slightly higher high, so four pips higher. Uh, I'm interested in this, obviously, because we are outside of this channel, have remained outside of this channel ever since we broke out of it three weeks ago. So um, still watching that. Uh, obviously, now we drop down to daily to see what that looks like. And you can see that that, that bullish retracement over here has actually led to a double top. Uh, so for those of you trading the hybrid type strategies, you're probably short on this already with Thursday's uh, bearish impulse candle. Uh, nothing happening at the moment yet. Uh, so let's just wait and see. Um, I think that's a good trade for those folks who are looking at the uh, hybrid approach. But if you are trading this for um, a daily impulse, then we are technically still in a, uh, a phase two or a corrective wave, and we need to wait for an indication 
that this phase two has come to an end on the higher time frame. So it's still a waiting game, but it is an interesting one to look at. Moving on to Euro Aussie, uh, very much inside of the channel. We have had a couple of bullish impulse candles uh, over the last couple of weeks on this one, which means of course that it's testing, well, it initially broke out of our preceding channel until uh, we had a bit of a breakdown in sequentiality of cyclicity. Uh, so it's um, still sitting at this resistance level. Uh, we did have that outside close on Friday, uh, I forgot to mention. Uh, so keep an eye on that, but obviously if you're looking for a valid W pattern, there's a lot of weakness still being shown here. So it does continue to test the resistance level, but if you are restricting yourself to outside C closes, uh, then this is not something that you can look at on the lower time frames at all. If you are looking to trade this uh, just because of the channel breakout on Friday, then remember the fact that we are currently at this point in time outside sitting, uh, I beg your pardon, sitting inside of the channel uh, means that we still can't touch that. So uh, this pullback, if it had remained outside of that four wave channel, uh, with a bullish impulse candle closing outside of it is something that you could have looked potentially to have traded today. But uh, the way things are going at the moment, these, uh, these retracements that started, uh, many of these started on Friday, some of them just started this morning, uh, are extending themselves into quite deep territory. Euro Kiwi flat as a pancake, nothing, nothing at all here for us. So certainly not interested in that. It did come down quite a lot, obviously, and that's uh, that was probably one of the biggest themes last week was the New Zealand dollar strength, uh, as I'm sure many of you noted, uh, and that's visible here. But it's still completely inside of the channels. Uh, it looks like it was a bit of a flash in the pan. Uh, that's very strong pullback on Friday across uh, pretty much all of the Kiwi pairs, uh, showing that that doesn't look like it's anything of any real interest to us. GBP Swiss on weekly, uh, an appalling picture for us trend traders. Really, that's absolutely nothing. Nothing worth looking at at all. So we don't waste time on it. Uh, GBP CAD, uh, here on weekly, another one of these pictures where we've been sitting outside of the channel for some time, but also been sitting inside of a phase two for one, two, three weeks already. Uh, so yeah, it's come back. It's testing this resistance level, it's respecting it. Uh, so that does look quite interesting. Perhaps not quite as interesting as that preceding instrument that we looked at, but here you can see how it is just bumping up against this uh, old resistance level. Uh, let's wait and see what happens. If you had taken an aggressive approach to go short on this last week, that wouldn't have worked out. Um, but overall, the, the fact that this resistance level has been so solidly respected uh, is, is definitely quite a bearish indication. Doesn't mean that the market is going to, to roll over and go down. Uh, obviously this is a probabilistic statement that I'm making, uh, but I'm very interested to note how well this resistance level has been respected. So we've seen some higher highs here as well as, uh, as a uh, higher lows, I beg your pardon, as it tests that resistance level, uh, which is something of a flag pattern, an ascending flag. Uh, let's see, wait and see which side it breaks out of. Uh, my money is on shorting it, but uh, that would be just some fun money, not, uh, not serious trading. Okay, so GBP Aussie, we did get a breakout on this one uh, on the weekly time frame last week. Nice bullish impulse candle. Uh, so dropping down to our lower time frame uh, here on the, uh, the daily time frame, looking for a pullback, which we're currently obviously getting. Now, uh, I think this was in fact a valid W pattern. Just let me double check that. Our close was 34.1 high. But, oh, just not unfortunately, but uh, nevertheless, it did come down, basically bounced off of the support level, went up again. Uh, so for those folks who were looking to be a bit more aggressive, you might've jumped in already. But if you're trading this in the, uh, calm and met the methodical approach that I, that I teach you guys, you should be waiting for a pullback and looking for another opportunity to go along with the daily impulse and a nice tight stop. So don't chase after trades, please, as you know. Uh, what it did give us, of course, as well is after that, uh, we did get into this on a, um, an H4 impulse on Friday. 
uh, and that is still languishing, uh, I do believe. In fact, I think as of now, that has probably stopped out for a relative, for a for not a complete loss, but nevertheless, I think that's a lose already. Let's have a sip of water. So that one wouldn't have worked out. It's quite a deep retracement. And as you can see, you know, we had that nice bullish uh, impulse wave, two impulse candles in a row. Uh, today is just not following through. Uh, Mondays often can be like this. So a little bit uh, disappointing in terms of the instruments where we did get some action. Uh, it seems to have fizzled up. Right, GBP, NZD, uh, nothing here on the weekly time frame. Of course, that means zero to us. And likewise, here you can see that Kiwi strength that I was talking about. Um, but again, you know, very much inside of our channels, despite the fact that we did have that previous breakout, uh, we, it was followed immediately by a bearish impulse wave. So uh, that's definitely a breakdown in cyclicity, therefore a false breakout, uh, nothing for us to touch there. And moving on to the other crosses. So we've got CAD Swiss on weekly, also absolutely nothing here on weekly of any interest or on daily. So we don't waste time. Aussie Swiss, uh, deep inside of this channel. So we did have a couple of bearish candles, but last week didn't really follow through with that. Very much inside of the channel. There's no WM pattern here or anything. Uh, but having said that, therefore, on that, that bearish move on weekly, looks like this on daily. Uh, and of course, that does mean that we've been looking at this. Uh, however, we were in a, a, a bearish phase two, uh, a bullish phase two, I beg your pardon, uh, for the majority of last week. Uh, and although we did have an isolated high there uh, and therefore potentially looking to short this um, on Friday with this, uh, this inside bar, um, that also has fizzled out as you can see today. So uh, if this continues like this and today doesn't uh, look anything different at the end of the day, it does mean that this low will be ringed which means that we will have seen a breakdown in this bearish cyclicity and the bearish trend will be officially over. So a uh, bit of a pity is many of these moves are just uh, uh, either a flash in the pan or the, the more uh, extended moves are, are dying out, um, will have died out over the last week or so. Okay, so Aussie CAD, uh, this is one where we've uh, been short in this for quite some time. If you were looking at the LPO channel and or the uh, M pattern that established itself uh, more than a month ago. So last week uh, we had that high test, but it closed as a bearish uh, impulse candle. So um, it, this has been one as well where we've, we've been trading it for some time. Uh, we've been in a hybrid trade as well for quite a long time on this. But uh, that cyclicity certainly got very weak through the course of last week. And even though it did roll over again uh, and close outside the channel on Friday, this morning it's just pulling straight back again, um, which is just useless for um, anyone who uh, is looking to short this. So you absolutely can't at the moment um, because of that bearish weakness that showed itself on that. So we're staying out of that. Aussie Kiwi, uh, this has been one of the more interesting instruments for the first time in a long time because we've not touched this for quite some time. Not so much in the weekly, but here on the daily again, you see that, that New Zealand dollar strength gave us a very significant breakout last week. Uh, but over the course of Friday and today, we're seeing uh, an extended pullback on this. So uh, that does mean that we are looking to short this again. Uh, should our final selection criteria or our selection criteria be met for H4 impulse. Uh, but at the moment, it is definitely in a retracement of phase two. So uh, sitting on our hands and waiting to see what happens. Kiwi Swiss, deep inside the channel. Uh, we had that bearish impulse uh, candle the previous week, came straight back again. So really nothing doing for us. That impulse candle did give us a previous breakout. But as you can see, it just pulled not only back inside of the channel, but I think this might be a just a phase one wave. What's that close look like? 43 and the high, 43.6. Okay, so borderline, uh, it respected that resistance level, uh, but nevertheless, it's extremely weak. We can't call this a strong bearish trend uh, with any stretch of the imagination. And finally, Kiwi CAD. 
Uh, we are looking at, again, a very, this is the New Zealand dollar strength I was talking about. You can see how last week this bearish move that we've been uh, observing beforehand reversed itself. Certainly, if you go down to the, the daily time frame, uh, that is definitely a bullish phase one. So this bearish trend on daily is 100% over, no question about it. Uh, also, just going back to weekly, the one thing I would say about this is we did get a close outside, if I'm not very much mistaken. Let's just double check the close, 46.5. And actually, no, it closed just inside of the channel, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, but bearing in mind that, you know, this is still overall a bearish trend. Uh, let's see what happens during the course of this week. But right now, uh, we need to pretty much sit on our hands. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this, this low has been ringed, so we are in a phase two on this. So for our um, bearish impulse strategies, we really can't do anything for daily impulse and absolutely nothing for H4 impulse uh, back inside of the channel and no bearish trend at all. All right, so that's the currency pairs. Let's just go back quickly to EURUSD and see if uh, Muna is, uh, like my conscience, has helped to spot something wrong. Uh, your question was the isolated high, you mean on weekly, okay. Have a look. Oh yes, quite right, thank you very much. Uh, that was something that is actually, I was discussing with somebody else, we were talking about that, teaching them the first of the three steps to heaven, and that was an example of how not to do it. So thank you for picking that up. All right, so, right, right. Need to be careful when I use my teaching platforms for the analysis. And then that will just need to go back a little bit further. Is that right to your satisfaction, Mina? Well spotted. I love it when my students are uh, able to spot the mistakes. I should actually throw more in there just to test you guys. All right. So, uh, yeah, in any case, it uh, doesn't change the overall picture. Very much inside of the channel, obviously, and uh, nothing is doing for us. Right, guys, uh, any questions? Anyone happy? All right, so no questions I see, but uh, one thing I just want to reiterate, I did mention it last week, is that I have been making some uh, enhancements to the, the, the training in the academy, uh, in the strategy center, as well as in the uh, technical analysis course, which is the uh, complete trader skill set. So if you haven't been through those in a while, please do make sure to have a look at them and go through the training again. Uh, it's obviously one of those things that I've always mentioned, I'm, I'm always going to be looking to enhance the training in the academy. There's always that fine line between trying to keep things as simple as possible and not get overly complicated with the different variations that are available uh, and help folks to, to get off on the right foot, particularly when looking to to trade a more conservative approach in the beginning. It's really important that you, you learn how to do that. Trading is not about catching moves, even though we make money when the market moves. Uh, it's about working an edge, preferably a convex edge, using the law of large numbers. Uh, also folks, I'd really like to thank you for your feedback on the foundations course. Uh, I have, as you've probably noticed, also made a few uh, changes and enhancements to that as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad that you guys found that so useful. Uh, it certainly is a, an, a vital foundation to your trading career. So uh, as you know, for those of you Academy members, it's essential that you do that foundations course first before you, you look to do anything else. Final notes, just as a bit of news, uh, we are beta testing the uh, trade manager at the moment for MT4. Uh, so obviously it's been um, quite a lot of work to translate our, uh, our existing software into software that also works with MT4, uh, trying to make sure that it's bulletproof. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for um, any news on that. All right, folks, so no further questions from you. Uh, we will potentially be looking to do some training later in the week. If you do have anything specific you'd like me to cover, uh, then please do uh, send a message to support at gptacademy.com or you're welcome to just drop it into the comments below this and uh, I'll be perfectly happy to 
uh, to cover anything again, even if it's been covered before, it doesn't matter. It's always good to go over things more than once. All right, folks, remember the cautionary note for the rest of this week. Uh, don't do anything that uh, isn't particularly called for. Uh, if the markets are telling you to stay out, then stay out. Have a great week, guys. I'll chat to you later in the week. Bye for now.